Hi and welcome to session 2 in the series. We will be giving an introduction to microservices and containers and demoing a cross-platform implementation. This is a track for microservices and containers. This initial presentation will be split over the next two series as follows. In the first series, we will have the following sessions. A quick introduction into containers, Docker in this case, and a demo. Then we'll have a quick introduction into microservices and a demo. Then we'll have a demo of building a simple containerized microservices service that is portable across Mac OS, Linux, and Windows platform. In the second series, we will demo over a few sessions a Docker-based IoT microservice that is running on a Raspberry Pi and reading a temperature sensor and saving it into a SQLite database. This microservice will be containerized and the container will run on the Raspberry Pi. Then the service will be accessed by a cloud service. Just a quick note here that managing microservices and containers in the cloud and across devices will come later as part of a new series. So what are containers? Well, we'll explain them relative to other things that we are familiar with. We're all familiar with standard machines. So in a standard machine, you have at the bottom is the infrastructure, which is basically the hardware, you know, the PC or the computer. And then on top of that, you have the operating system. Within the operating system, you know, there are the, the binaries and the libraries. On top of that, you have different applications. Running. Another thing that we are familiar with are virtual machines. So in a scenario where virtual machines are used, you have a standard machine with its on host OS. On top of that host OS, there is a hypervisor running, something like VMware, for example. That hypervisor can spin off multiple virtual machines. Each virtual machine, at the bottom level of it, there is an emulation of the hardware, and then there is a full install of the guest OS and all the other layers that we would see in a standard machine. So there is the guest operating system, there are the binaries and the libraries and the applications. So as you can see, it's, it's really good for isolation, but it is heavy. With each virtual machine spun, the host machine loses a lot of resources. Then we have containers. Now containers are an abstraction at the app layer that packages code and dependencies together. So multiple containers can run on the same machine and they share the OS kernel with other containers, each running as an isolated process in user space. So containers take up less space than virtual machines. Container images run typically in the tens of megabytes in size, whereas virtual machines are a lot more. And containers also, they can start almost instantly. So as you can see here, you have at the lower level, you have the infrastructure, which is the hardware. Then you have the operating system. Then you have container system like Docker. Within that, you can run the different apps with all what they need. Why are containers cool? Well, because they package software into standardized units for development, shipment, and deployment. So a container image is a lightweight, standalone, executable package of a piece of software that includes everything needed to run it. Code, runtime, system tools, system libraries, settings, and it's available for both Linux and Windows. This is in, we are talking here about Docker. And containerized software will always run the same, regardless of the environment. So containers isolate software from its surroundings. For example, differences between development and staging environments, and they help reduce conflicts between teams running different software of the same infrastructure. So in a way, this, these containers are something that definitely developers like, I mean, development managers love, and architects as well. Okay, now we'll have the demo. First step is to download Docker, and you do that by going to docker.com. And you see here that there is a community edition and the enterprise edition. So I'll download the community edition. The community edition is free while the enterprise is paid. And they'll tell you to get it from the Docker store. That's similar to an app store. And as you can see here, they have Docker for different platforms. For me, I would download one for the Mac which I've already done, and I run the install program. And after you run the install program, you'll see Docker appearing here on the top. 
and this control allows you to perform some administrative functions and access other resources, including an application called Kitematic that allows you to visually manage Docker images and containers. There are a few concepts relating to Docker that we need to be aware of. One of them is the concept of images and another one is containers. So think of images as similar to classes in object-oriented programming and think of containers as similar to objects. So you get an image, you create an image or you download it and then you run it and when you run it you instantiate it into a container and you can instantiate multiple containers based on the same image so let's have a look at some of that first we'll see check out what I have on my machine so that I have the right installation and then that I have the latest uh, docker version now if I want to see what images I have on my machine I can run Docker images and as you can see I don't have any images yet on my machine and then also you want to check do I have any containers running of course I I don't expect that I do because I don't have any images in the first place and that's what we see here so let's run the docker hello world first So it checks locally, does it have it? No, it doesn't have it, so it will go and grab it from the cloud and run it. And what you see is that this is what it did, download it, run it, and this is the output from it. So say hello from Docker. And then here there are explanation exactly of what happened, you know, step by step. And then here they are saying you may want to try something more ambitious, such as downloading and running the Ubuntu image. And what you see here is that you can also pass it a command, in this case, the bash command. Okay, so that, that's, this is a good segue for us to explain the other, another concept here. As we were saying, is that you can download Docker images. Well, you, where do you download them from? You download them from the Docker Hub. So here we see that there is the Docker Hub for official repositories. And these are like repositories or images created by entities where each entity is creating images which they are an authority on. So as you can see here, there is like, for example, the Ubuntu official Docker image, and there are many more. But there are also other third party images that were created with different components and different configurations. Now, the idea is that Docker images are things you can compose. And one smart way of doing that is basically to start with a base image and then to add to it different components, make different changes into the configurations. You do that by creating a file called docker file where you include you know the list of the components and the instructions that are needed to happen to create the image and then docker will basically run it and it will grab the different components from the cloud and it will put the image together. So in our case here so if we want to do what they are asking is to run the docker bash and it would this would illustrate another aspect of interesting aspect of uh, containers. So let's try that. Now before I run it, I need to let you know about the, the flag, the IT flag. Uh, this flag instructs Docker to allocate a pseudo TTY connected to the container standard in, creating an interactive bash shell in the container. So it doesn't find it locally, so it goes and grabs it from the cloud. Now once it's done, you see this is now it's interesting because what you see here is now we are actually at an Ubuntu prompt and we are now inside an Ubuntu environment. So I can go and check like into another directory and I'm inside an Ubuntu environment. So this environment has all what is needed for me to run Ubuntu bash scripts, for example, or like Linux bash scripts. So now I can exit and I'm back at the Mac level. Now, if you want to see what images you have on the system, you see now we have two. We have the Hello World and the Ubuntu. And it's important to note that, you know, they have names and they have IDs. And this applies also to containers. And all the commands that related to administering containers and the images, you can use with them either the name or the ID. So we have two images. Now if you want to see, are there any containers running? So 
we run the docker ps and we see that we don't we don't have containers running well yes because we have the containers instantiated but they are not running at this point so we can say check by doing by running yeah with the a option and then here you see that we have these two, two containers running and again you know as i said you know there is a container id and then you have the container name now the thing to pay attention to the name is that the name is this one in the case of the Ubuntu. Ubuntu here is the name of the image, but the name of the container is this one, and this one for the hello world. And you know, to us here it says romantic noble, and that those names were generated by Docker because we didn't provide names. If we provided names, then this is there to show those names. Now to execute those commands, uh, we can use again either the container ID or the name. Now, if you want to remove an, an image, you need first to remove the, the container. So here in this case, we'll remove an container first, and I can do it with the. Let me do it with the container ID docker to remove and then put the container ID and now it's moved now if I run it again you see I have only the Ubuntu one left now if like again going back to images I still have the two images because I didn't delete any one of them yet so I'll just say I wanna, again now I want to delete the hello world image you can docker more and then i is for image and then the hello world image now it's deleted and then i want to check that out now i have only one image left so with this we can see that one of the powerful aspects of containers is the ability to instrument them and to generate containers on the fly but for now we'll talk about the visual administration so one is kitematic and as you can see here it logs into docker hub defaults to the recommended images and here you see the container that's on my machine and this is screen for that container and I can start restart execute commands and then I can also here this is to access the docker CLI so that's a quick introduction into docker we'll continue presenting different aspects of docker and containers throughout so it's more relevant and within context